the people out there are going to be really curious about the Brazil prison. And they're like, can you take us in there? Like, what first day going in? You know, is it shock to your system? What are you seeing? How are the guards treating you? What's the food like? What's your cell like? Well, I'm, you know, I'm not the average inmate. So everybody's looking after me. When they first pinch me, uh, when they come with the army, they came, everybody, it was all over Associated Press. And the morning papers was King of New York, King of Crime of New York. And they got my picture on the headlines all over King of Crime of New York and Mafia, Gangster, Street Boss. And uh, the article started in magazines around the world. And so when I walk in the, the penitentiary, the first place they bring me is an Interpol. It looked like an abandoned building, actually. And I, I, if I had to think any different, I'd be lying. I thought they were going to hit me uh, as, as far as I wasn't going back to jail. I thought they were going to try to kill me because I don't know their country. I'm not really sure what's going on. They just yeah. brought me into an abandoned building. There's nobody there, and they're telling me this is prison. But there's nobody there. There's no lights. There's nothing. And they're bringing me up the stairs, and they have me belly chained, uh, chained to the wrist, chained around my you know upper body down. So I'm kind of like, uh, if you watch one of these Hannibal Lecter movies, uh, The Silence of the Lambs, they got me like that. Uh, they exaggerate how dangerous I am in the papers. And uh, and actually on the arrest warrant, they have me as a champion jiu-jitsu fighter and a boxer. I'm a boxer, but I mean, I'm not a, a great jiu-jitsu fighter. I've trained for a year or so, a year and a half. I'm not that good. Uh, but that's how they're treating me. They're, they're scared to get too close to me and they're moving me with six, seven guys at a time. And... Uh, they bring me to this uh, one room. It's abandoned. Above me is a military a cop with a machine gun. And they throw me in a room with no toilet, nothing, and uh, put me down there. And I stayed there for about a day, day and a half, uh, pissed shit in my shirt. I had to rip my shirt open. And uh, guys like, oh, will tell you that uh, mosquitoes that you guys can't believe. It's like you're in a jungle. And uh, I had no choice to take my shirt off which I didn't want to do because of the mosquitoes and I had a shit in it and the other half I had to use it to wipe. And, uh, you know, I'm looking and I'm thinking to myself, are these guys looking to clip me? Are they looking to torture me? Are they looking to really bring me to a prison? I'm really not sure. So your anxiety level and I'm trying to see my way, how You'd I can get out. You'd be thinking clip, wouldn't you really? Yeah, 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 without a doubt. And I, I started doing, above me is the bars and I do a lot of pull-ups being in jail yeah. my whole life. So I started doing pull-ups to try to let go of some of the anxiety and push-ups and eventually... I lay down and fall asleep on some shit, piss, whatever's there, bugs, and I, I end up getting an, a, a body infection all over me, and mm. I was welting up, so I'm not really sure what that was. And the next day, that developed, and they brought me to another prison, and then they brought me to a medical facility that was <laughs> primitive, and they brought me to Ari Franco, where it was I was the first one of out of our crew of guys that was in Ari Franco. And I seen the way they walked me through everybody obviously knew who i was already people were yelling all over the jail when i walked in so they're yelling respect or are people now thinking they can extort you because you got money no 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 respect yeah it was uh, even the guards were showing me respect when i came in uh the, the paper said it was very dangerous and you know they knew that uh i was known to be a killer and in jail, obviously, that's a respect thing. And, of course, yeah. And yeah. Uh, most of the guys looked out. As soon as I walked in my cell, it was, uh, I will tell you, Klaus will tell you, Justin, uh, Tim, these guys, there's 12 bunks in, in, in a cell there. And one of them is used for food. So there's 11. And there's probably 50, 60 guys in a cell overcrowded. And I walked in, and the first thing I said is, somebody's giving up a cell. Uh, giving up a bunk <laughs> and they started arguing i said i'll give you two minutes to figure out which one he is but i'm gonna, i'm taking a bunk so they uh did you get the bottom one at that yeah no i didn't, I didn't want the bunk. <laughs> actually i said uh, uh, you know in brazil you can't take a bottom bunk because there's rats all over the jails oh yeah so you don't want to be higher up. And i actually like the bottoms if i was in american prison but yeah there i insisted on a top bunk and i insisted on the back and uh my agent, David Nash, and, you know, we were speaking about this, and I asked for I told them I want one of the back uh, bunks, and they said, why? Well, and, you know, people don't understand this because they're the old-style bars. Yeah. So if you're in one of those front bunks, they, they'll spit alcohol on you and, and light you on fire. Yeah. So, there's, there's a, so you don't stay in those front bunks. Those are the worst bunks to take. And in these jails, there's riots all the time, and there's fires all the time, and there's guards, actually, 
if you look up some of the stuff with they threw firebombs and it killed about 14 16 inmates and wanted to sell so i know this because i've been around a little bit and it, i was living in brazil so i know a couple of guys and they told me the situation in the prisons there and uh, so i had a little heads up on it big thing in america is to go past with the boiling hot water with the sugar in it and swill you yeah 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 it's just like yeah it's the united states jail same yeah yeah, yeah. So what was the food like then? Uh, rice and beans in a room like two or three times the size it is. And uh, so it sits there and, and, you know, listen, the human conditions there as it is, is known to be, you know, horrendous. So you can imagine that food, rice and beans, pre-made in those things, how many bugs, how many rats, mice are in it. And when they serve it to us, uh, the first couple of times I used to look at the food and, and, uh, at the beginning before these guys got there. But when these guys get there, I tell them the same thing when they got there. Listen, ignore some of those bugs and just start eating it because that's what we got. And there are times, you know, when we could get to some guards, there's times that there's weeks it's good, a day is good, and then there's months when it's not. So when we can get to them, we would get some outside food. At times we'd get pizza and McDonald's and whatever else we can get our hands on and buy and liquor and whatever else. But on a regular fucking basis, uh, we're eating bugs and beans. Are you best getting it straight away, being first to get it, or are you best just, or is it all the same? At the beginning, I didn't want to eat it the first couple of days, and there was a Brazilian guy that I got close to, and then the, he was in jail with us. And if you see some pictures, we look like we're concentration camp yeah, guys. Yeah. Very skinny, and you, you can see how bad the, the, your parlor is on your skin color. And, you know, he told me at that time, John, you got to eat this shit whether you like it or not. And then, you know, honestly, it's like anything else. You adjust, you eat it. And I didn't even think about it anymore. I started eating it like it was nothing. And, you know, you're shitting and pissing on the floor in a, in a hole. And the, the biggest thing that you really never adjust to is the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes just fucking tear you up day and night. And they have dengue and guys are dying from it. So, you know, th that's the dangerous part of more that I think than being, you know, the chance of getting killed in there is is those mosquitoes. Soft toilet paper is out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, hey, believe it or not, I just vacationed back in Brazil <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> and people said, you're fucking nuts. I said, well, I plan on going to the beach this time, not to prison. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get food smuggled in, was that guards or visitors? Yeah, everybody. You know, we, you know, at the time I was pretty wealthy. Uh, some of my guys that were with us, we uh, aligned together. And we did everything together between buying smuggled phones, bribing guards, hurting guys. We did it as a unit, and that's what made us survive. We didn't do it as an individual. We were real, I, I got to tell you something, we're very loyal to each other. And you can see it's uh, 12 and 15 years later for some of us, and we're still together, and we're still talking and staying in touch. And uh, we laugh at some of the stories that we hear from people telling bullshit stories about a jail. They have no idea how, how dangerous and bad it was. Well, you, you just got that for life now, haven't you? What's that? You, 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 you're bonded, bonded for life. Oh, you're I thought you said uh, your yeah. brothers for life. Don't yeah, I mean, you know, I guess you know, I talk about the military, every country, and you know, I got a lot of yeah. respect for the military, and I've every time I talk on a show, I bring them up because I have massive respect for guys that you know put their life on the line, whether they see one day action or never see action, they have the uh, the chance of losing their life if they are they, if they do see any action. So, I think they understand as a brotherhood. And outside of the mafia, this is the real brotherhood of guys in prison yeah. where the loyalty really is there because we survive off each other and we're never going to forget what we went through together. And you do feel bonded for life when you go through such an intense environment. Yeah, because you, you, you talk, we watch guys die left and right. You know, somebody tells you, you know, we watch a kid that uh, was charged with blowing up a bus with people on it. I don't really think the kid did it. They, they you know, they, they put him in a single cell. And they hung the kid, said he hung himself, and they left him there for four days or a week. It stunk in there. And, you know, we're used to this. We watched a couple of guys get macheted uh, to death before that. And the guys weren't breathing well because we're sub below and the air is bad. And they died suffering of oxygen, uh, not being able to breathe because they had, you know, medical problems prior to that. So we watch a lot of deaths. And uh, then during the riots, you know, you're, you're watching 12 and 16 and 40 guys get killed. And, you know, it's no joke when, you you know, the riots go off and there's fires all over the prisons and they're coming for you. So we uh, learned to protect each other and we learned to, listen, we're like brothers, family forever now. They mixed all the prisons together too because you had, you had your pedophiles with your burglars and everything else, everything all in one. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there was t there was times when the, you know they would shake us down. They put a thousand guys in a, in a space where honestly you could probably squeeze in two hundred. Yeah, and they'd keep us there in a hundred and ten, one hundred fifteen degrees. Uh, no lights, pitch black. We're all in there naked, and you got to piss and shit. And we try to, as a group, we all decide that let's you know piss and shit in the corner, yeah. where uh, you know you know we keep it somewhat sanitary, and you know there's nothing to wipe. There's no way to wipe yourself. And, uh, you know, those were some of the situations we were out in the yards. They put us out in the yard full of dogs, rocks. Uh, military police would have guns to our heads and leave us out in the sun. It was, you know, some days in Brazil, it's 120 degrees. We'd stay there, you know, 15 hours without moving. So if you're pissing and shitting right where you're sitting, and uh, I got to tell you, I don't even know how to fuck these military guys who stayed because they're in, they're in uh, all black with masks with hats and i mean they had to stay out there too just like us at least we were naked <laughs> i mean so i i don't really get it but you know it's a different world you know and it's a different system and uh it's dangerous and we put ourselves in a dangerous situation so as brothers i mean i was friends with klaus for years since the early 90s so it was just uh the same guy that helped me go on a run and survive it's a coincidence we ended up in the same prison but then when we meet guys like oh and uh, Justin and Tim and some of the other guys, Milos, he's dead, and Camilo and uh, Max, these guys, we all stay in touch with each other. And, you know, we have a real good bond with each other. Most of us are very tight with each other.